I still remember the feeling after visiting the hairdresser when I when I when I realized the frontal hair was uh, thinning. It was it was quite obvious, especially on my on my left temple. My hairdresser, who knew my hair for many years, sadly had to agree with it. And I, I used to have a square-shaped military haircut, and I I just loved the way I could I could shape my hair. And from this day, a visit at the hairdresser was no longer a pleasure. Uh, the, continue, the hair loss continued year after year in the front and, and gradually, eventually on the, on the sides also. Uh, so, so the military haircut was now definitely history and I told my hairdresser to keep it slightly longer, the hair, so I could uh, hide the thinning spots. Uh, the more hair loss I had, the more uncomfortable I felt. Uh, I, was, I was stressed, I was worried, I was, uh, I, wa I was scared. So I started to wear a cap. And because I looked good with a cap, it took away some of my negative emotions and, and gave me a false confidence. But as soon as I took that cap off, these negative emotions immediately returned. During this period, I told my parents that the hair loss made me feel physically, mentally ill. But they just told me things like, um, it's normal, girls like temples, it's masculine. Uh, and uh, it, just, it just pissed me off, it didn't help at all, because I knew it was normal, I knew it was natural. But, uh, but I, I didn't care about that. The only thing I was thinking about was the cool hair that I used to have. Uh, so I wasn't interested in being rational. Uh, it felt like having a car with an ugly scratch on it. Uh, and what do you do when you get a scratch on your car? You go to the workshop and fix it, of course. And I wanted to fix my scratch. I was 22 at this time, and I knew it was possible to do a hair transplantation. But I didn't know the difference between the results of the different doctors and clinics. So I went to a consultation at the local clinic with my friend Thomas. And he was also suffering from hair loss and he was also having problems to deal with it like me. And to make it short, we didn't end up going there because Thomas, he got a really bad stomach feeling about the clinic. I was not as skeptical as Thomas was, uh, but still the day to day, I'm really thankful for, for, for him for getting this skeptical feeling. Uh, there was no patient's experience available at that time, but I read about uh, the experiences many years later and it turned out that they gave both donor scars and, uh, and, and recipient scars. Uh, it was really, really terrible scars. And there was itchiness and numbness in the donor scars, even years after surgery. And I've seen scars there, and some of them are like, like this, like one centimeter, two centimeter thick. So again, I'm very, very happy we didn't go there. So from I was 22 to 28, I, I continued with my life as best as I could. I finished my studies, I got a good job, and I continued to wear my cap, and my combo hairstyle, uh, as often as possible. Uh, so I, I had a pretty much okay life, but there was a hole inside me, and this hole wouldn't be filled before I would do a hair transplant. So at the age of 28, I, I decided to do a hair transplant in a Norwegian clinic that was known to be one of the most famous clinics in Norway. And I remember I really had a rush when I, when I did a booking because I, I, I had so much hope that this would make me look and feel okay again. It was only a minor FUE uh, procedure with thousand hairs. And I remember I wasn't really happy at all after the procedure, because the hairline felt, uh, looked weird, and also the density seemed uh, quite poor. But I thought it was just imagination, and the doctor, he knew best, and, um, and I, I, I didn't even raise a question. So when the hair growth kicked in a couple of months later, I, I, was, uh, I was right about this uh, suspicious feeling, because it did look good. Uh, but I thought at least some hairs were better than nothing in the thinning areas. 
So, so in summary, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, happy, I wasn't unhappy. It just didn't change my appearance into any high degree. So I just continued with my cap uh, as often as possible and my combo hairstyle. So at the age of 31, I was in London for a consultation with, uh, with Hassan and Wang with, uh, with the clinic in, uh, in Vancouver, Canada. And I ended up there because of my friend Thomas uh, from, from the consultation back when I was 22. And he did an excellent job with the researching over many years, for, for probably a couple of hundred hours, to find uh, the best possible clinic for surgery. Uh, and I'm really thankful for the job he did. If it wouldn't be for him, I most likely would not have ended up with Hazard and Wang. I immediately got a good feeling about the clinic. So I decided to, 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 to right away that I wanted to do it. And this time I would, I would go for a FUT strip surgery. My only challenge was uh, the tight, tight scalp that I had. Um, and I would have to do briefly scalp exercises uh, like this and like, and like this for uh, one, one hour a day for, for three months in order to increase the laxity of the scalp. To, uh, so to have as many donor hairs as possible. I knew this was my last chance, and if I wouldn't get a proper hair transplant, it would affect the rest of my life in a negative way. So, uh, so after, after the strip was done, I was unfortunately told that the density of the grafts was a bit worse than expected, and they might not be able to go for the plant hairline. And the feeling I had when I heard that was, uh, I, I, I almost started to cry. I, I felt numb in my whole body. And Dr. Wang, he saw my reaction and he promised me he would do anything to make sure I would have enough donor hairs. Meaning he would, he would make the strip slightly longer if, if necessary. But fortunately, they ended up with 3,501 grafts, which was enough for the proposed hairline. And I was so relieved when I heard that. I, uh, I still remember the words from Dr. Wang when he said, uh, you have enough grafts, we stick to the original plan. Uh, so rest of the procedure went really fine. Uh, it was actually less painful than expected. I had slightly pain when, when, the, when the anesthesia was injected, but, but that's about it. Uh, the procedure lasted 12 hours and I was, I was watching Netflix, I was relaxing, even having a nap. So even, even the procedure itself was uh, quite a good experience. Uh, I did feel a bit pain on the way home in the plane. Uh, my sleep was a bit disturbed, I had started getting slightly pain from the scar, but I, I knew about this. I was prepared for it and when I, when I, when I saw the results later, this was just uh, minor bagatelles in the, in the big picture. After three months, fine hairs started to come. And I made a short haircut after four months. And after this haircut, it was even more obvious how good it was going to be. And I, I was so excited. The growing cycle had just started and my hair was already looking good. So I got really emotional that evening. Uh, I, I, I felt so relieved and happy that I, I couldn't sleep. I was just uh, laying on a couch, I was watching uh, TV, I was having a couple of beers, uh, with an insane feeling of, of, of happiness and, 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 and pure luck. I, I had to celebrate it, of course. So I went to a, a big party town in East Europe, and I remember the whole weekend I had an insane feeling of pure happiness. Uh, and, and I was making friends with everyone at the hotel, the guests, the receptionists, the bartenders, taxi drivers, everyone. Uh, and it was quite amazing to see how my positive energy would attract people. And I remember later in the evening, I was taken to the elevator. And there was a couple there in the, in the elevator. I hadn't spoken to them, but they obviously had observed me. Uh, I, I said hello to them, and the guy said hello. Hello, I have to tell you one thing, you, you are so confident. Um, so really funny to hear and, and there's no way I could have felt 
like how I felt if it wouldn't be for a hair transplant. Three years after, I was getting more used uh, to my new look and I couldn't remember that I was told at the clinic it, it would be possible to do a second hair transplant to lower my hairline and, and have my hair slightly thicker. Uh, I didn't think much about it uh, the first years, but at this time, I, after three years, I just decided I wanted to do it. I didn't see any downside. The whole experience in Vancouver was good uh, and all, almost felt like a vacation. And uh, in, in addition to that, I was 100% c confident with uh, Dr. Wang's work now. Uh, and I remember I was, I was really, really uh, happy with the hairline that was made and I was, I was actually looking forward to the surgery this time as, as I knew 100% what I was going through. And there was one incident I especially, re especially remember during the um, surgery. Uh, they inserted the hairs first on the, on, the, on the sides and when they were finished I went to the toilet and I suspected when I looked into the mirror that uh, the hairline on the side was a bit asymmetrical comparing to the left side. And I told this to Dr. Wang, uh, and he agreed with me. So he inserted 100 grafts on that side. And I was really amazed when I looked into the mirror again, and I saw he placed the grafts 100% as I wanted, like he, was, he knew what I was thinking. Really impressive. Um, so on the way home, I, I, I was just so happy that everything went fine, and I had a more, even more hair grafts than, uh, than was planned for. In addition to that, I was, I was uh, really, really happy with the hairline made. So the emotional kick that I got four months after the first transplant, I got this kick on the way home, actually. Uh, and it was much less noticeable this time. Well, I done. Uh, I, I came to work four days after this time and I was having uh, I was having a meeting with a colleague that I know very well and I was a bit surprised when she didn't uh, ask me anything so I just asked her don't you see a difference on me and uh, and she said well when I look at you now there looks to be a slight uh, change did you do a facelift your forehead is completely free of wrinkles I knew this time how it was go how good it was going to be so I didn't lose control over my feelings but after seven eight months a couple of funny incidents happened when, when the hair growth was even thicker I remember I was uh, in the queue for a nightclub and there was a really drunk guy next to me and his reaction when he saw me was this oh my god what a cool hair uh, and uh, this guy, he, did, he didn't have any attention at all of compliment, complimenting me as a person. Um, the truth just fell out of him. And the funny part was not the words itself, more the undeniable, honest reaction. And uh, it would probably be even more funny if a girl would compliment me, but, but still it was, uh, was an okay, uh, okay evening. Uh, and and these, my, my self-confidence was so high at this time, so these kind of incidents, it didn't affect uh, me into any high degree. But still it was really funny to hear. And also uh, it was a good proof how good the hair transplant was. And also I remember a couple of weeks later I was having lun late lunch in the, in the can cantina at work. Uh, it was only me sitting there in addition to the ladies working in the cantina. Uh, sitting a couple of tables next to me and I didn't bother to listen to what they were talking about but I couldn't avoid to hear this uh, when one of the ladies said my son is two years old and he has the same hair color as that guy sitting there and I just pray he would get so beautiful hair when he grows up. So in summary the first hair transplant, I went from being damaged to, uh, to, to looking good. And uh, my new appearance increased my confidence level. After the second hair transplant, I had even a higher confidence. Uh, and, and, and this time I went from looking good to looking exceptionally good. So ex exceptionally good that a drunk guy in the nightclub was shocked when he saw my cool hair. 
that uh, the lady in the cantina so much wanted her son to have a hair like me. Um, that the waiter in Turkey just had to compliment my hair. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's really sad pe that people choose nearby clinics just because it's close, it's cheaper, and the clinics advertise with, uh, with non-surgical uh, procedures, can go back to work after two days, nobody will notice it. Uh, I traveled 15 hours both ways, and yes, it was a bit stressful, especially on the way home with jet lag and slightly pain from the scar. But this was only bagatelles and, uh, and, and, and the, in the big picture, especially when seeing the results. So I'm really thankful for the job that Dr. Wang and his team did. I knew that I, if, if I would have a proper life, I, I needed a hair transplant. And um, my, my first consultation was in a clinic where people got their life destroyed. Uh, and it's just so important to to uh, to do a good research because if you if you if you do go to the wrong clinic they can they can ma make your life even worse uh, and I've, I've I've gone through it I went I went to a really really bad clinic and uh, and I actually remember the the advisor with Hassan and Wang he he spoke with my friend Thomas after my procedure and he said he didn't want to say this loud when, when I met him, but he said it was so bad. Uh, he said for, in a scale from one to 10, it was, it was a two. Uh, and, and, and I believe that's true. Uh, and, and look at my, my result now, in a scale from one to 10, I, I believe it's a 10. Even, even strange people are, are complimenting my hair and the feeling I have now is, uh, is just uh, so fantastic. And it did cost money. But uh, it's probably the, the best spent money I've ever did.